tower is under attack. Back so soon? Do not fear And then MKB, K KPL, there's item 101 right here. Beautiful stuff. Well, here come Maneski. They feel they're ready. I do find James. A boat from IRG. The fight is being forced by FTD. Chan Chan with a nice little roar. The soul bind. Gonna catch a couple of them and the Wukong's command zoning them out. FTD have nowhere to battle now. Their choke point has been destroyed, but the buybacks from FTD, this defender's advantage may play to their advantage as Moon, he's been left alone pretty much. Arjet too low to fight, does get another slight, but he's got to jump away with a remnant and KP now. One versus four, and he's up the creek without a paddle. A nice couple of buybacks from FTD. James, QYQX, both returning to the fight. Definitely worth. They want Beautiful. to try and fight. PA gets coiled up. Silenced, hit with a big crit, the RP from James, fake pumped, doesn't want just one, wants to catch two, but that's not the life he'll lead. The ink swell onto KP will land, but Chan Chan in the back being zoned out by three from Maneski as the Dragonite arriving late to the party. PA has already fallen and Grimstroke follows. Immediately after his pilot eye racks up the strength, the decays are flowing, and FTD, they've got to get going. James stopped with a DK as well. Maneski, they claim Every single life that FTD had to offer. A five-man wipe, only losing your puck. And how many track kills did we have there? I just want to see the goal difference now after that fight, honestly. You can wait it out for the next one. You can get another refresher shard for yourself. <laughs> yeah, wait, you, you got 40, 40 seconds or so. Oh, to read on Jirax, sure. Uh, it's mid, a yeah, good initiation out. Will it be enough? The Fiend Crypt's there, and the Spirit is already down. He's been very happy he didn't spend that money. But with the death of Bane, Defense must come, but how fast? Fortification, buying a little bit more time, keeping the racks alive. Yapso will try and do as much work, but Lifesteal, he wants to commit. He wants his Ember to force the buyback. It'll mean so much in the next team fight if Ember can't just respawn in. So they let the mid melee racks go. Tossing everything else they've got for the jump forward set. He's looking for the kill over on Rubik. They can't afford to die mid one. He has no other choice. He has to come into this fight underneath the Wukong command of Thompson and the Willow Wisp. Nisha's in trouble. He'll jump up, but he's still in range of the Iyo Ball. And he's pushed around. Another doppelganger. It won't work. He'll go down. Mid one's BKP will allow him a little bit of protection with the PL buying back. They need to find some kills. They need to make this worth it in some way, shape, or form because OG, they're continuing the rampage. Forward in towards the Conquer. The slap down. It connects on the mid one. The back Backlines and Seb's already there, but the Searing Chains will not allow him to get the cross up. It was on cooldown anyway. Two minutes dead for Zai. That was a dieback from him. And the Tier 3 towers will fall on top. OG, finally they found the opening that they were looking for against Team Secret to take 
that top lane of rags and in fact Seb just goes for more kills mid one jumps forward underneath the tier four towers team secret they have not enough players to feel comfortable enough here not even inside their own base and not even with nisha who are level 25 pl trying to get into the back lines of og but it won't work they're losing too many players they're all gone it's gg og take game one of this two game series to kick off the sl1 katavinsa god that was such a sick game to open up this tournament man certainly gonna get burst down if they choose to, to be able to jump you real quickly. That's how like OG has that kind of initiation or burst anyway. Nice hook buy back. The black hole is available if they want to try and use it. Have to go up the hill, but Jiris is copying so much damage. They're draining out the life of Nisha. Animage trying to protect himself with the spell block shield. Gets over towards Yapsaw. Triggers the mana star breaking free with the mana void. The damage is a good spill damage for the rock in the back line. Jurex was never part of this one. Same for potentially the Animage. He was trying to be safe under the tier three tower. No way to jump away, but he's got a spell block available. And also Enchantress, heavy damage in design, making him think twice about coming up. But you do not have your nice you do not have your Enigma. What have you really got? You've got time. No tells creating on the top. Poppy's already got himself a double kill over on this warlock. And they're gonna get more. Burn off the manor of mid one. One charges are available. He'll blink up. The rolling oh, thunder no. started from Panga, but also bait. ILTW thought he was gonna get in the middle of this one. He had to jump away. The spell block is not controlling him. Mid one just rolls through him. And they're rolling through OG here in game two. But the black hole is a beautiful thing. I love it. I love it. But really. It's, it's a, what do we say, Cap? What did we say about Black Holes with no team? Team activity, Toby. You gotta get every Spectre lane that's, or that's, something. That's a, that's a lot of what ifs. Yeah. There is special haunt oh. reveals all of them, and they're in a great position. The Battle Bonds are rock three together. OG! Not what they want to have happen. Four heroes. <laughs> you can't get it away. Four, it's only gonna be three. So gets hit by the rolling thunder of mid one. Look where Notel actually hides. He knows this will be a dieback for him if he goes down. It's actually anti mage. Okay, maybe I can kill off mid one. Maybe I can have the money and all the solo experience that goes with it. Or maybe I can just die. Zai is gonna be that I'll land the sun, turns on the pulse nova. This is the game. Everyone from OG is dead. GG is the call. OG, they started off ESL. Like, there's no resummon available for him, but they're pushing in the bottom lane. Beastmaster is trying to force a TP back. Livesteal's coming down as well. They're going for a trade-off, letting the Bristleback be the frontline fighter, but Apo is so much stronger. And you say goodbye to your Bristleback. The bottom tier three tower, it loses a third of its life, but the top tower, hilariously enough, is still alive, but their own Crimson Guard being popped up. That's the one from the Visage. Ravage sp sprays out, cats out in three heroes. The bigger one is the Life Stealer. They get another core kill, and even the Spike Carapace stun onto the Jakira, meaning it can go from one to the other. The split soul assumption damage, it does heavy work, but Jakira can tank through it, and maybe they can control the Nixus Assassin FTD, the defense, but no, you have cheese. He got the life straight back up again. Now Avro's just gonna rip apart the back line of FTD. Nowhere to stand. This will be a dieback from the Bristol. He does nowhere near enough damage, and now they can just take the top lane of Rags in relative peace, or they can take more kills. Either or, Jakiro is gone. His buyback's expanded. Baden, if he goes down to that's both of your large cores. Nice both stuff. of your networks have nothing available as the rage wears off. The impale is perfect. And that may actually just be half of the game right there. In fact, it is the full game according to FTD. They lose the fight very convincingly. And uh, they show the Rubik. TP's coming in. Blink, Doom. He did get the rage off, which will give him a little bit of extra movement to get away. And maybe... No. Nope. Ice path, level four. Stalin. Hold. How long is that ice path last, actually? I forgot. I haven't seen a Rubik vs. Kiro in so long. Keep 2.5 mind. 2. 2. second no, duration. But plus the passive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 36% debuff amplification at the moment. So that's 36 times 2. Point. Never mind. It's that's longer. This. The ice path lasts longer, Toby. That's math. Uh, Troll Trap is out once again. Tusca can't move away. And in fact, look at the Tombbringer. They knew they already had the kill. So jumping forward with the OD Hammer. Beastmaster is deleted and they're going once again for even more. Chasing the last remaining player alive for FTD. Goodbye, Troll. And I don't want to say goodbye game 20 minutes in, but... Shadows take us. Stars, take me! Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. As 
fallen. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack. Our blade for my return is Radiant's imminent. bottom barracks are under attack. It oh, should have been you. <laughs> this battle isn't over yet. Now, Radiant's top barracks are under attack. Radiant. But Notel is creating space already. Ajit is playing with Notel instead of going and playing with his racks, is defending uh, them. Notel, exactly. He knows. He knows what he's doing. He's toying with this young man's heart, and Ajit. He's got to get himself in here. Batrider chained up. No lasso, but yes, there's a big crit. A three-man RP. Not it's a good what? connection. The trouble is the damage is lacking. Now we move in with a Febby kill, and I just got the sprint away. The crit from LTW says goodbye. And Maneski, they tap out here in game one. OG still continuing this hot streak. That was a great RP, but for what? Like, he RPs three. He's not holding Aegis or anything, just a Manta style as a black hole. Hello, KP will catch a hold of the Ember, but again, just a remnant away. They lack the damage and the follow through. Thompson's just going to find a kill on Pylo Die, quickly bring Arjit to his knees, very close to dropping, but Thompson stays inside his circle. And they'll focus down the tier three. BKB, KP has blink black hole. His refresher orb has been used. But he doesn't jump in. I mean, now he, he has skips. no BKB either, so... Mm. They're just gonna go in, I believe. Yeah, in we go with RTW. Omni Slash, nice mischief, gets away. Thompson save, but Jirax has the black hole. Easy as you like on the Juggernaut, who's likely just gonna have to buy back here to have any chance in this game whatsoever. They have to. They have to fight this somehow. You still have the BKB on Tiny, but honestly... Not, not great. Limp cursed up. That's quite a bit of damage coming through from the Monkey King onto Limp, and they will try and blow him up as HFN arrives, rages forward and clears through Miracle. Monkey down and 3v3 about to follow. His Macropire was good, but it doesn't zone out Chaos. In they move! We Hearts found another two! Z Freak and Death both dropping. What on earth has happened? This game, he makes sure he's nice and safe, surrounded by his buddies. But it is the first lane of Barracks, nearly down, so they go in with a song. Kunkka buys back, they're setting up, this is it. Big Wombo combo, four-man Ice Path with the BKB from HFN. Allows them to turn until Storm Hammer from Z Freak with the vacuum. Amazing. Down they go, easy peasy for complexity. Another one added to the tally as Tarvo drops, and a triple kill for Miracle. Wait, huh? Oh dear, huh? what have you done? You've been caught up in all sorts of nonsense, netted and snared the slight fist by a couple of seconds, but there is no escape from that prison. Let's just call him dear, huh? <laughs> I mean, that was...
being controlled up by 33. They managed to get the Oracle saved. Soxa in the back line. They're still trying to go for him. Koipa is going to try and run down Soxa. He runs to help the rest of his team. Magic the heal off from the Chen, but Boxy eventually gets blown up. Even Soxa's with the Oracle the Astro. Soxa, he's like, please, somebody Dude. kill the wolves, kill the Necro. Astro him. Imprison me anything, but it's not quite there. Koipa, no longer in the wolf form is going to be run down pretty quickly by Ninja Pajamas, and it just looks like they have buybacks, yes, but they still don't have their Luna for 13 seconds, and that is 13 too many seconds, it looks like, as Nip might just be able to take a second lane of Rax. Actually, nice stomp in from 33, gets the back line, blows up the Oracle, and Taiga, he's low too. This could be some diebacks coming in, as 33 is going to be able to cleave him down, but now here comes Mickey out with the big ultimate. Doesn't actually hit 33 once. 33 is going to be able to stay alive here, and Ace, Ace down to about half health, but still super tanky. Will be able to get back Ninjas the Pajamas, even thinking about still going for these Raxes, because after all, they're only faced up against two cores. They know Alliance have already blown through their buybacks. That's going to be one mid lane Rax and maybe just the game here. They can actually kill the Luna. Again, no buyback. Caught Boxy as well with the Telekinesis. Pull him back to the rest of the team and Alliance now bit. Stop, or maybe as like an offlaner, but as a carry, this is, I mean, you can get punished really hard. A couple deaths and you fall off. The setup in the mid lane. They look towards HF and they have got the Hex out. They are going to drag him back in, but straight away, in response, the Rock comes out. The E Blade as well onto HFM for now, keeping him safe there, allowing him to pop his BKB after the stun wears off. They do lose King Ardy on the left track. We'll see them dive in deep. Atavo is trying to finish off Femra on the Disruptor. Again, those signs are getting caught out by these Earthbites. That's a dead Weaver once again. Tavo still alive, even though they dropped the Static Storm down upon him with a pipe of insight. He has so much magic resistance, he can just simply walk out. XXS has got a Meepo problem on the, the side of side. things, as Weeha chases down the Chaos Knight, finishes him off, but Boka cannot hold them back as Mushi's trying to TP back to base. He'll make it, but everybody else on Asta is dead. I mean, Weeha just... 